What is dance? Why do we dance? And what's the significance of dance in society? We can define dance as a movement or something that's done for no reason at all. We hop, skip, sometimes we jump, jump for joy, shrug our shoulders and twinkle in our eyes. We all dance without knowing that we are dancing. So dance inadvertently is a part of everybody's life, everybody's daily life. Even if you think you have two left feet, we've all danced at some point in our lives. Have you seen children? Children always dance. That's me dancing outside for fun. And sometimes we dance when it rains. And children dance if they see a frog. or They, they, they dance at every chance they get. But society tells them not to dance. Don't jump around here. Don't walk there. Don't run around in the restaurant. But inherently, we're dancers. We're all dancers as human beings. And everybody dances in every culture and every society. This inherent need that we have to dance when cultivated, fostered, and also structured becomes classical dance. In social situations, it becomes social dancing or folk dance. In India especially, our classical dance is so, so, so ancient and it's so old. And I think they had a structure and the classical dance was formed over over 3,000 years old, over 3,000 years ago. And it can be rooted back to a text called the Natya Shastra. I don't know how many of you have heard of it, but the Natya Shastra is a text on dramaturgy. And it has dance, music, theater, stage, all different aspects. And this text was comprehensive. And this, it's one of the oldest texts of dramaturgy that has been found world over. All of Southeast Asian dance forms, as well as the classical Indian dance forms, could be traced back to this text, potentially. Bharatanatyam is a form of the South. This is what I am trained in. This is what I learn and I perform. The Indian icon of dance is Nataraja, the Lord of, Sh the Lord of Dance, or Shiva as we call him. This piece is on Ardhanarishwara. Ardhanarishwara is a form of Shiva that has the male and the female, the masculine and feminine qualities united. And Tandava, or the dance of Shiva, is the dance of the universe. We say, Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya, Vachikam Sarva Vangmayam. Aharyam Chandra Taradi, Tamnama Satvikam Shiva. We say the dance of Shiva is like the dance of the universe. Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya, whose body is the entire world, whose words and language is the summation of all languages, whose ornaments are the moon and the stars. To that Shiva, who has the guna or the quality of subtlety, I bow down. This is a verse that all dancers and all classical dancers in India use and start their prayer. They start their dance with this prayer many times. And Shiva is a symbol of this dance. So when we say Shiva, the cosmic dancer, it is not a physical person that we see that is dancing. We think of the dance of the universe, the dance of the stars, the fire, the earth, the water, the wind, and all people dancing together in their movement in whatever they do. Classical Indian dance has always been special to me. We may say it's outdated. We talk about mythology, we talk about gods, and we talk about kings that do not exist anymore. But don't we have fantasy in our lives even now? We have Superman, we have Batman, we have Avatar, we have Lord of the Rings. Your Superman may be my Hanuman, and your Batman may be some other god of mine. At the same time, all the stories that we tell in classical Indian dance are things that happen to us in our daily lives. We tell the stories of little Krishna, where he steals the butter, where he does naughty things, and then he hides in the corner. It sounds very much like my nephew. He does the same things, picks up a frog and throws it. You wonder where they get the, the energy to do so many things, running around all the time, but it's something that we experience. There was a verse of Shiva and Parvati. 
where Parvati was upset that Shiva didn't bring her flowers. She says, where, where are my flowers? You go out every day, you used to bring me flowers and now no flowers anymore. What happened to my flowers? Sounds like my mother. <laughs> At the same time, there are stories of Radha, or the Naikas, or the hero in waiting at the window, wondering where Krishna is. And she's disappointed because he's gone away with some other girl. Doesn't it sound like the youth of today? All of you who are in college are waiting for your boyfriends over the weekend. The difference is that in Indian dance, we attribute all these stories to a divine because we see the divinity in everything. Whether it's a flower, or the wind, or a creeper, everything seems to be divine. Even relationships, every relationship is divine. The relationship of a loved one and a lover, the relationship of a husband and a wife, of a mother and a father, all of it is divine. So in classical Indian dance, we attribute the same relationships that we can relate to and this very same human emotion that we are used to, to a divine being. Instead of restricting it, it actually expands the reach that these very same stories have because it is not about a person that just I know. It's about a person that everybody could know. So in classical Indian dance, we have many different forms. The West has ballet primarily, but in the East, each region has taken to specialize the form that could be rooted to this 3,000 years ago. And we have Odissi, Bharatanatya, Mohiniyattam, Kathakali, Kathak, Manipuri. And every region in India, much like our specialized languages, also has developed a specialized classical dance form. We also have hundreds of folk dance forms in India that are very alive, practiced, and present in all the villages in all the areas, and every state has more than 10, 15 folk dance forms that are very distinctly different from one another. In Bharatanatyam, my favorite character is Krishna, because he says and does so many different things. We, we see him as a child when he runs quietly and he hides, and he troubles his mother. And his mother is always scolding Krishna, telling him, go there, sit quietly. But Krishna is so cute. He's really sweet with his smile. There's a beautiful verse, Kasturi Tilakam, Lalata Palaki, with his wide forehead. Vakshastale Kaustubam, he has a gem at his chest. Nasa Agri Navamauktikam, at the tip of his nose, he wears a nose ring. And this verse, I'll show you shortly. Started the video, please. <laughs> I'll proceed to tell you about Bharatanatyam and how the form came to be now. In the olden days, the form was very curvilinear. There was a lot of movement that was very structured differently. Now Bharatanatyam is very linear. It has a lot of angles. Though the angular movement is present now, there are hints that connect it to the old text of the Nati Shastra. The flowing movement and everything has been revived by Dr. Padma Subramanian's reconstruction of the Karanas that were present in the Nati Shastra. Kasturi Tilakam Lalata Halaki Vakshasthali Tilakam 
stylized, many things that we have that is a symbol, a gesture that is specific for a king, for a deer, for people, for the gods, for wind. These are all specific, they're written in the text. Every hasta or hand gesture has many meanings. There are, there are about 40 uh, verses for every hand gesture that specify what it can be used for. And there are other things that are universal gestures, like what? Or oh, come here now. Hmm, I see. These are all things that are what we call loka dharmi, or what is present everywhere. In modern or contemporary dance, which is another learning of mine, we don't use our facial expression as much. Our face is fairly normal, pleasant, but we use our bodies to emote. And it's lovely because it's so different from classical dance. And both have their own life and their own energies. The contemporary dance, or modern dance as we, we say, is something of today. In the West, a large portion of the art is based on novelty, or what we find new to do. In India, we adhere to tradition and how well we can preserve. In India, though we base all our new classical dances on the old forms, there is innovation, but the vocabulary is still the same. We still like doing songs on Krishna. But in modern dance, everything is about weight and momentum and flow. Through my diverse training, 
I learned to find a physicality that was strong. That Bharatanatyam through the years had, but did not impart in the same way as modern or ballet. And in Bharatanatyam, I found the spiritual, theatrical heritage of India. And so, as a youth of today, I can't let go of Bharatanatyam. It is still inherently a part of me. I perform Bharatanatyam extensively. I do it all the time. And modern dance is a part of who I am today in urban India. And both form me together. To begin a career in dance is, very di uh, is a very difficult decision to make in India especially, where everybody becomes an engineer or a doctor, or where everybody is expected to have an academic background. When I decided to go to dance school, I was actually applying to Carnegie Mellon at the same time. And I got in for computer science and architecture. And then my mother said, you know, you can be a dancer if you want to. It was an option I hadn't thought of. And here I am, dancing every day, all the time. Morning to night. And I rehearse all the time as well. And as dancers and artists, we love to share our art. We love for people to see us, to dance with us, and to enjoy and experience the joy and emotions that we, that we course through every time we dance. But the truth is that even if no one were to ever see me dance again, any day, I would still be dancing every day for myself. Because that is what makes me, and that is what is me. And I think most dancers who dance with the passion and with love for dance would agree with me that ultimately dance is to go inwards, to be with yourself and to be happy with whoever you are. Thank you.